Hey, yo, it's your girl, Kato, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Carly. Today, um, I have a very special guest, and he, quote unquote, has said that we are going to fuck this shit up today, and I hope you guys are ready for this as well. (laughs) (laughs) Well, folks, if you know me, you know I do fuck shit up, right? (laughs) I blow up anything that I do from a video, piece of real estate, into a podcast. I love it. I do it all. Um, so I like this because the other guests that I've had on this show, I have a little bit more of a foundation and a relationship with, but we yeah. met recently. Yeah. We spoke for 0.2 seconds. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We followed each other on Instagram yeah. and we were like, let's do this thing. Yes. So we don't have much of like a, a connection. We so just don't know each other. We don't know each other. Y- you wanted to do a lunch. I did. I wanted I to I do a lunch. I was like, n- he said no. No, dude. I asked him on a date. He told me no. Imagine. Wow. How a fucking badass I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, because here's what I here's what I think. Like, a lot of those first conversations uh-huh. if we're present to your word. Yeah, I think they're great conversations. So let's just have them on here. I like it. Yeah. So, so excuse us in advance because so this is like an <laughs> online date, date. right? <laughs> A virtual date. <laughs> okay, no so funny. introduce yourself for my audience, please. So uh, my name is Jalal Abumwais. I would like to bet I'm the first Middle Eastern Arab on this podcast. So I'm um, actually born and raised in Jordan, came to America 2010, learned English here. Uh, another American story from going uh, pretty much from being homeless to building my business today, which is a real estate investment firm. Uh, I am the sole owner of it. It's called the King's Estates. Uh, if you are in real estate, you definitely know who we are. If not, it's my fault. Now you do. And uh, just turned 30 years old, going through Miami. Been in Miami since 2015. And uh, not my favorite cup of tea, but I like the business here. Yeah. And um, that's overall who I am. And if to know more, obviously, you just got to check my Instagram, the king of Miami real estate. I love Everywhere. it. And you yeah. have a TikTok, but you I speak do. mostly... That's Arabic. Arabic. Yes. Okay. Yeah. On TikTok. Yeah. So do you have videos that you do in English as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. So okay. my uh, Instagram is all English, of course. Mm-hmm. Arabic is all on TikTok, which is it's a funny story how my new blow up back home, which has only started in February. Uh, some some news channel took a motivational video that I did in Arabic, only had like 800 views on YouTube, mm-hmm. and they took it and put it on the Facebook page that they had for that news channel. Wow. It got like over 10 million views in one week. That's crazy. And they reached out to me like, hey, can you fucking do another one? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I got up to four videos. People were like started to recognize my mom at the mall. Oh my and God. And I was like, that's <laughs> too much because there's no man at the house, and that's a third world country. So yeah. I said, let me calm that down. And the reason the news channel found me, because some 14 years old in Jordan had a TikTok account. He made a TikTok, a fan page TikTok account of me, mm-hmm. put up w- put up that video, like a clip of it. It got 300,000 views there. Then the news channel picked it up. Wow. So I go back to the kid. I'm like, dude, uh, this page got me known as hell back home. I bought it from him in February. It had like 13,000 uh, followers, and now it's like 200 and like millions of views. I'm like... Amazing. We just crossed like 1.3, 1.2 million likes in like four months. I'm like, that's crazy. How long have you been in the States? Uh, since 2010, August 2010. August 20, 2010 is when I arrived to America, and I'll never forget it. Yeah. Why? Tell uh, me about it. So uh, we grew up poor, call it what it is. Uh, we always had a home, right? Had food, but we were the, just the type of family. Like, if you have a shirt, you don't need another one, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's all you have. Just live with it. And uh, if you grow up and become something else, that's on you. Um, just like everybody that is not in America, we want to come for to America for the, f- you know, financial freedom, or that's what you think. Cause you think, you think yeah. money grows on trees in America. Right. And I remember like when I was young, like I always watched nine Oh two one Oh that mm-hmm. show. Yeah. And I would look at my mom like, yeah, when I grow up, I'm going to live like these people. I'm going to be in America. <laughs> I'm going to go to California. I'm going to get rich. Funny thing is I just made it to California like a couple weeks ago and I hated it. I really? Would, I would never go back. Where, where did you go? And why did you hate it? Uh, I just are we being honest? Yeah. I don't like the people. Okay. Like, it's just very fucking weird. <laughs> I hate their tax laws. I went to L.A. The streets are messed up. The people are messed up. And it's just not my cup of tea. Like, just to let you know, like, I'm a true Middle Eastern. Like, I like um, like space. Mm-hmm. I like people to be, um, I don't know how to say it. Like, if you're a man, act like a man. If you're a woman, act like a woman. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in LA those roles don't mesh well. No. And <laughs> it's starting to r- actually happen in Miami. And uh, I would never live there. Doesn't matter what's the money. I'm here. 
Okay. For now. So Miami. Miami for now. A Miami for now. Yeah. Like other pl- other places on the burner. Uh, probably any state with good tax laws. Uh, Texas. Texas is great. There's yeah. uh, but but I've always had this dream of owning 1,000 acres in Montana and build a dream home there. That's gonna be like my disconnect. It's gonna have like uh, the what is it called? The runway for my jet, my helicopter, hell okay. pad. Like, it's going to be the whole thing. I'm going to build it one day. And here's the fun thing. I've never been to Montana yet. <laughs> but I know <laughs> everything know. about Montana. You know everything yeah, about it. Yeah, it's going to fucking happen one so day. So how old were you when you came here? What was your mindset? I want you to finish that story. When, I was, you, when uh, you first came to the States, what was your thoughts? I was uh, almost 18 years old. I was mm-hmm. about two months away from turning 18 years old. Uh, thought was I'm going to come to America and I'm going to make money very quick and uh, I'm going to go to college, finish my degree because my mom wanted me to, to do that and I wanted to make her proud. I got to America. I was like, holy shit, this is not what, what I watched on 90210. I, <laughs> mind you, 90210 is in California and in, in L.A. I landed in Ohio, Cleveland. Like, <laughs> it was the, t- it was the worst. community. Yeah, d- very. So um, knew a friend from Jordan that was there, and it, d- it didn't last in Ohio that long. It was about two, three months. Uh, he wasn't even set up for himself. He didn't even know how to open up a bank account, so he's, he was terrible. Yeah. I moved to Georgia to uh, actually stay with my uncle because, you know, he said, I'll help you out. That didn't last very long. I ended up uh, meeting somebody uh, that owned a car dealership, and he actually allowed me to sleep in the dealership and work there and what happened is i would uh you know in the beginning i was the car the guy that cleans the dealership it was a buy here pay here up north in georgia it's not like a mercedes you know benz mm-hmm. dealer so you're like a porter yeah like it was buy here pay here used cars uh-huh. that's it so i was just the guy that cleans the dealer uh okay. clean the bathrooms whatever they need mm-hmm. me to do for 200 dollars a week and the, and the coolest part to me was the man's wife used to make him lunch and bring it to work every day and she would just bring extra food for me. So she makes uh-huh. lunch for both of us, $200 a week for somebody that it was pretty much almost homeless. Mm-hmm. I was like, fuck yeah, that's a deal. So I did that for a year, then I became a sales guy. Uh, and I became a, a decent one after a year because I was the guy that is cleaning the dealership. So when people come in, I'm the first one they see. So I used to go to the uh, salesperson back then and say, hey, if I bring you the people first before someone else takes them, you give me a cut. would you give me a cut? The guy said, fuck you, no. I said, okay, <laughs> great. Then I tried to make my first sale. That worked out. Then I go to the owner. I'm like, hey, let me be a car sales guy. He said, yeah, but who's going to clean the dealer? And then I said, okay, I'm going to try to do both until I find somebody to clean the dealer, like to, to do basically the bitch work, and then I'm going to be into sales. Mm-hmm. Did just that. Uh, and when I got into sales, uh, at some point, the owner's friend, he said, hey, Jalal, y- you're a hard worker. You suck at sales, but you're a hard worker. Listen to this guy named Grant Cardone, and he sends me a link for Grant Cardone. You know who he is, right? Yeah, of course. Then uh, he was like, watch all his videos. He'll teach you all about sales, but he's a scam. Don't buy any of his books. <laughs> Don't let him con you. I said, okay, great. I watched this video. I'm not, I'm not fucking lying to you. I watched this video on replay because my English wasn't the best by then. I didn't know any English, by the way. Mm-hmm. So I was just picking up English. I watched the same video on, on replay from about 10, 30, 11 o'clock till about 8, 9 o'clock in the morning on replay. I was fucking hooked. It was a simple video for somebody that speaks simple, barely in English, mm-hmm. talking about you can have the life you want, the health you want, the wife you want, the money you want, everything you want. And I'm brought up that rich people, if you're rich, you might be fucking unhealthy or there's something missing all the time, right? right. Like, like and he was talking a whole different language which is i can have everything everything. in different ways he was saying it and i'm like oh my god this sounds like so good and i was on i I kept playing the video something fucking switched kept studying grant's content uh and then basically i bought the books literally like turned nine o'clock i bought every fucking book he had (laughs) and that guy was like don't buy a book don't buy a book all the books bought every fucking book and then i grabbed one of his books that uh helps you handle rebuttals like if somebody says Hey, I'm busy, or hey, this is too expensive. Uh, how, what would you answer them, mm-hmm. right? And I grabbed that book, kept kept actually reading it. I actually translated it to Arabic, most of it, whatever I didn't I understand. And I would use it on people. Like, this lady comes in, well, I don't have time, or I'm busy, or I got to talk to my husband. And I would say what I learned in the book. And at some point, it started working. And I'm like, shit, this is great. I got hooked on his content. And then at some point, I was selling more cars, and things were great. Fast forward, 2015 comes, and I'm all in on his content. I said, I gotta fucking meet this guy. And he promotes this seminar in Mexico, Cancun, 
and it was end of 2014. I said, I got to go there. I go there on, on one mission. I'm going to convince Grant Cardone to hire me. That was the mission. Uh, a three-day seminar, I convinced them to hire me. I come back to uh, Atlanta, to Georgia, and, uh, you know, he goes back to Miami. That's where he's based out of. The COO for him calls me for a phone interview, and by the end of the call, which didn't last very long, she said, we can't hire you. Your English is not good, and this is a cold-calling job. It's all on the phone. We can't hire you. Hangs up, sends me an email. We can't hire you, basically. I deleted the email. I refused to read it. I walked into the dealer, and I tell the owner, Fuck, Grant Cardone just hired me, and they can't wait to have me. I have to go. Like, they came and run the business with them. They need me there. <laughs> I literally, I'm not bullshitting you, I believed that lie. It was, I don't know what the heck it was, but I believed it. Because uh -huh. I believed working for who I was, though I respect him, and, I, and I'm very grateful for the man till today he's given me an opportunity. He doesn't live the life that I want. And I'm like, Grant has the family, the jet, the this, the that. Uh, that's somebody I can learn from. That's right. what I thought, right? And I immediately grabbed my own ass, fucking drove down to Miami in my 2007 Honda Fit. And that's where I feel like my story got started. I, um, I remember buying a suit from Express to, to go for the interview th that doesn't exist. And I drive down to Miami and I literally get ready at LA Fitness on Biscayne on 123rd. I, I drive down to Collins on 71st where his office used to be, showed up at seven morning, suited up. And then uh, the COO comes in right at 8 o'clock, and she tells me, are you Jalal? I'm like, yeah. She's like, didn't we say we're not going to hire you? I said, ma'am, you drove five miles to come to work for your no, which is for me. Mm -hmm. I drove a 1,000 miles for my yes. Just give me one opportunity. Meet me. She was a little upset even after I said that. She's like, wait outside. I was like, I'll wait outside. Grant comes in. I tell Grant Cardone, I was like, hey, I'm the guy in Mexico. He's like, yeah, I remember you. What are you doing here? The, you got hired? I'm like, no, they actually said, no, my English is not good enough, blah, blah. <laughs> Grant was like, just, just fucking walk in with me. I walk in with him. I waited on the couch for eight hours to actually get to sit down with him because obviously I had his schedule. I waited the whole hour, eight hours. I was reading his book outside, go in, anyways, convinced them to hire me because I did what everybody would not be willing to do. I left everything to come here. Just give me a fucking job. Give me one opportunity. That lasted about three months. Got fired. And then, uh, <laughs> a little, I'm being honest. What did you get fired for? Uh, Your English? Or no, you were an asshole? No, no, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's just say it's my fault, whatever I got fired for. It was absolutely my fault. I take full responsibility. So I get fired. <laughs> and, and now I drive to where I was sleeping. And I'm like, I got depressed for two days. Exactly, two days. I counted it. I said, I have two days. I'm willing to cry, bitch, whatever. I got two days only. That's it. Two days, I didn't leave bed. And then I figured, like, the guy who used to work for always was in real estate. Grant is in real estate. Maybe I should get my real estate license. Literally called uh, Gold Coast, went got my real estate license. Uh, took me eight months to do my first deal. So those eight months is actually where I slept in my car. I slept in my car for eight months. Uh, uh, across from the latitude in Brickell, there is a, mm -hmm. a Publix, mm -hmm. the parking lot where I used to park and sleep, uh, the business that I used to work at, uh, the brokerage as a realtor was at the latitude. So I would sleep in my car, go home every day. I mean, go to the office every day. I, if I can, if I'm lucky, I sneak into the office, I stay late, I sleep in the office. So I don't have to sleep in my car because the AC wasn't working. Holy and shit. did that for eight months, closed my first deal after eight months. It was, it was tough. Like I used to, wait for realtors to leave the office uh, because they would leave the, their foods in, in, the, uh, in the fridge and the cleaning lady would throw it at the end of the day. So I would hope they forget their food and then before that cleaning lady comes to clean the fridge so it doesn't stick, it. no, I would pack it for the, I would take it out, change the bag, put it in a black bag, I would put it back in the fridge so that's my food next day. Oh my so gosh. I literally survived that way and uh, I was, I mean, I, mean, I figured it out and I didn't have any expenses. I told my family to wait. like, Because uh, before I w moved down to Miami, I gave my mom a couple thousand dollars. I said, leave that on you. I'm mm -hmm. not going to make money for some time. Please make it last as long as you can. Yeah. So made myself last those eight months, closed my first deal. Crazy fucking story. I'm not going to go into it now, but crazy story on my first deal. Made 13500 and uh, uh, that cleaned me up, sent my mom some money again, got a little room in Little Havana that I uh, rented. It was $625 for a shared room. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't care. The same day, I bought another suit because I gained some weight back then. I, I bought another <laughs> suit, and I went to a real estate event in Zuma, and there was this plastic surgeon, 
He's like, man, I'm married, but I need a little condo for fun. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, condo to take my friends to. He wants to chill on his wife. I said, dude, oh I'll God. I got the perfect fucking con. I was like, dude, if you buy with me, I even bring you the women too. So <laughs> Obviously, oh I did God. it. Okay. Within like literally within like 13, 14 days, like I had them bought the condo cash and whatever. It was at the Viceroy. It used to be called the Viceroy. Okay. Icon Brickle. And uh, I made $8,000. That was great to make my story a little shorter too. Did a couple deals. I had some money saved up. Uh, I had $27,000 saved up. And then I saw a, a house on the market for 100000 Convinced them to sell it for sixty eight. I given them my 27, convinced somebody to put up the rest to do the deal with me. Uh, he didn't want to do it, thought it was a bad deal. I was like, look, if it loses any money, take it out of my 27, because he thought it was a bad deal. So we did the deal, and then at the end, we each profited 29,000 on top of what we invested. Kept rolling, and fast forward today, my company is um, one of my companies, which is my main one, the real estate company is doing about three to four million a year i have different companies and you know god has been great to me so that's, that's awesome. the longest story in very short form wow yeah i buy a lot of buildings in the hood <laughs> anybody selling any <laughs> buildings no palaco come to me in the king that's amazing yeah. congratulations what a thank story you. thank you so uh you have all this success financially yeah i would say you have uh, the biggest thing the biggest tool which is the finances for what for whatever you want to do with life, right? But yeah. do you have a uh, missus? Do you have kids? Do you no. have something you're going to share that with? I know you take care of your mom, you said. <sighs> I take care of my entire family. Okay. 100%. So you take uh, care of your entire family. I take family. care of many families, actually. I build uh, bakeries and refugee camps back home for uh, refugees from uh, uh, Gaza or Syria from war. For ca I, I take care of a lot of people. And I like to publicize that. Because I need people to know these things happen and we need to help. So, again, not to make it about it. But, yeah, I take care of my family. Uh, no wife, no kids. Uh, you, put, you put a lot of videos up about dating. I, I in, in Arabic and recently in English, I talked about it a few times. I have this whole highlight about dating uh, about dating advice. But, yeah, no wife, no kids. Never had a wife, never had kids, never, uh, never been engaged. Um, had one girlfriend that set my whole life, one relationship mm -hmm. that didn't last as I think it was only one year in 2000, like from 17 to 18. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that was it since then been on a bunch of dates, but never really got serious about one. Why? Fucking vague ass. Not answer. I'm going to give you like, it's such a generic question. Why? But there has to be something like so it, I can think of like a few things off the top okay. of my head that I'm like, okay. Okay. So look, why, you said why, something walking in here, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously we all have our non-negotiables when it comes to dating, right? So for example, there's things I immediately, I wouldn't date someone for. It doesn't matter what she's doing, how good she looks or how well she sounds, right? So you got your non-negotiables out of the way, then some people like but by the time you filter out your non-negotiables with with whoever you want to date or the crowd you think you want to date some of almost nobody's left right? right you said something about being old school i'm old school too like i don't certain things i don't want my woman to be doing and then i see everyone in miami is doing them and then like for example i would never be with a woman that i feel like been around my industry like my real estate industry mm -hmm. usually realtors in the business have been around other realtors in the business and uh, as a prideful man i ain't gonna share my damn woman like that like <laughs> no, there's okay. no way i would walk into a fucking event a real estate event and i'm known in my industry and walk into an event and like yeah that I've been with that woman, like, and that's my woman. Like, fuck, I go with them. I'm so done. you're trying to find someone who's considered untouched in well, your eyes. Well, it's not just untouched, but like values have changed in Miami. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about old school, look at look at the dating scene we have in Miami. Again, I'm a Middle Eastern Arab man, grew up in Jordan, Amman. We're taught to not touch a woman that's not yours. Come to Miami, where everybody is kissing and hugging and touching and partying and doing the whole thing. A and, I, and I just can't see it. Like when I dated, when I had that one relationship, she was, uh, she was Latina. Uh, where, the, where are you from? <laughs> I don't talk about it. What? <laughs> What's I your ethnicity? Was, I was born and raised in Miami. Yeah. And my background is uh, pretty complicated. I've never shared it publicly. What before. is it? Um, so family. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. she was Latina. You know, the Latin culture is very touchy. Yeah. And I'm a man that you can't touch my woman. And uh, like, I remember like when we'd go to events because she was like, you know, known for events and whatever. 
and some just guy friends coming up, like kissing and hugging, and I'm like, dude. And one time, I literally had to put my hand in the middle. I was like, bro, get the fuck, to get your own woman. What is this? And he's like, oh, it's the culture. I'm like, N not mine. Like, yeah, that has to be so confusing. That like we even say hello and kiss on the cheek. So, I battle with that. Yeah. I, ba I battle that. That's one thing. I don't want to make it like the main thing. But yeah. however, the dating scene in Miami is fucked for many reasons. I feel like we're losing values, old school values. And um, there's I, I would say that's across U.S. Uh, well, maybe, I haven't been. I haven't. US, I haven't been in the entire U.S. I, I've been in Miami. I've been in very few states. But okay. I feel like Miami is a melting pot from everybody. Miami of, of everybody. is terrible. Yes. Yeah. Florida. And yeah. General, probably like I would cover. Yeah. I would cover Fort Lauderdale. And yeah. Also, I would cover West Palm. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Like if you look at the dating scene now in Miami, like you know, because I look at my options, most women my age, a little bit older. Cause I don't date too young, right? Mm -hmm. But most women my age, for example, like a lot of them are single moms. Mm -hmm. And I have a whole thing about single mom. You want to get into this? Oh, okay. yeah. You're a single mom. <laughs> this episode just got <laughs> spicy. <laughs> so look, here's here's my thing. So I come from the mindset: you don't have kids unless you're married, right? right. That's yes. what I was raised with. That's what I know by religion and by culture. Yeah. And I come into this culture of like anybody can have sex. Um, I don't have sex with a woman that's not my wife. By the way, did that before. I haven't done it in years now. And I'm hardcore in that. Uh, I don't sleep around, and I take a lot of fucking pride in it. And uh, some people might think I'm a loser for it, whatever. You should see my options. But I just don't. If, if you're not my woman, I ain't touching you. Right. Period. If I'm having sex with you, that means I'm okay with having kids with you. Mm -hmm. If I can do that, I don't want to do it. Maybe this is not the cool thing these days, but I'm very all about it, right? Okay. So I come into this culture, basically couple dates with anybody they want to sleep around. That's fine, sure. Your own option, your body, your choice. I get it. But then, you know, like if a woman is sleeping with somebody just because she's attracted or she feels like it, she she wants to have sex at that point, but that's not a person she would want uh, you know, to be with long term or maybe yep. she doesn't know yet, then she ends up with a kid with that person. Which is, which is what I feel happens in Miami. And then yep. I feel like all women around my age, majority, especially in the real estate industry at least, <laughs> are single mothers. And yes. there's this thing about single mothers. Being a single mother is okay, because a lot of times it's not in your control. Maybe you've been with somebody or been married and thought it's the one, made a kid, and then it turned out to be not good. Right. I get it. But then being a single mother or dating a single mother, I feel like there's guidelines, right? Like yeah. you need to be careful. First of all, what's her time management like? How often she has the kid. Yeah. And then you got to think of all these things. Then at some point you got to meet the kid. Is that a kid you want to be in their life? Like, do you feel like you would love them like your own? And it's so, you know, many things you need to look at. So I don't say, oh, I wouldn't date a single mother, but I would, I would say which single mother. Right. Because some of them don't have time management, right? That son runs their lives or daughter and they don't know how to manage kids. And that kid is not even raised probably uh properly and then y like she can't take control of her life then you want to come into that life and make her a wife and then it's a mess so in general if if, if somebody is a single mother i ask more questions um and then i decide if that's somebody i want to go through learning more about or just get out of it and i feel like <sighs> like she's got to be so exceptional mm -hmm. and i'm being honest for me to say i'll raise someone else's kid because if I can't take her and love her kid like it's mine, I'm not gonna do it. Because yeah. it's unfair. Yeah. Um, is that a very generic answer? Because I can no, keep rolling. I want you. Not, I want I you to think, ask me. I don't think it's that it's generic. I think it's a very fair an answer, and I think that yeah. it's honest. You know what I mean? There yeah. are uh, a lot of different situations when you look at single moms, single moms who, like you said, were married yeah. and in love, and they thought, okay, I'm with my husband, yeah. and end up, you know, becoming a single mother. Which I do have a theory for a lot yeah. of women in real estate that are single moms because the women who are very um like who i would consider top dogs that are single moms in the real estate world which like i'm not super familiar with real estate but in general the bad bitches that i know and i consider a bad bitch somebody who makes millions and up right and they're single moms you always look at the person that they were with and i feel like they grew and they didn't right so they got to where they were because they were exceptional at time management and because they were a powerhouse and because they wanted something and their partner couldn't keep up. I th it's hard because marriage these days, there's so many things I do believe in with marriage. Um, but one of the things that scares me the yeah. most 
is like especially now being a single mom but one of the things that scares me the most about being married with someone in the future is the rate at which i grow Mm -hmm. and it's constant and if i'm not growing i feel stuck i feel like i need to just keep going 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 so i understand women who outgrow men because if you are i see if you are stagnant i could never fucking deal with that yeah i I would never want to show my kid that you know, you get to this spot and then you stop. Unless mm-hmm. I really wanted to, unless I was comfortable. Mm-hmm. And like, I want to live in Bali and do nothing. That's different. But um, there are people who are just, they just become complacent. Only thing that I ever wanted yeah. was a f- like a fucking stable family home. And now that I fucked that up, right? Like, I'm Did a single you? mom. Did I, you? Yeah, I mean. I Maybe he fucked that I up. I didn't fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> I would say it was mutual, like, <laughs> Got it. you know, both of us just kind of, we had a good relationship, we did. Yeah. We. How long ago was that? Um, A year and a half. Okay. We did have a, we had a good relationship. Yeah. I think that there was a lot of love. Yeah. And ultimately, it just came down to morals and values not aligning. And then what I considered, like, a family home and what he considered a family, family home. What do you consider as a family things. home? Like a mom and a dad and a husband and a wife okay, under one roof. And like there's a sense of like privacy and there's also like boundaries with okay. like things that we didn't agree yeah, with. Yeah, that's old school. That's, that's yes. the right way. So and then it, w- it was it was I wouldn't say it was my fault, but obviously like, you know, it's our fault that we mm-hmm. didn't take an opportunity to get to know each mm-hmm. other just a little bit more. But I got pregnant so fucking fast. Like talking about like sleeping around, I made him wait like a month before I slept with him, which is a long time (laughs) in Miami. And the first time I sleep with him, I got pregnant. But I didn't find out till I was three months pregnant. So I was three months pregnant and we found out, we had only been together four months. We felt very in love. We told each other we loved each other. But did we know all of that? I preach no. Like if you're not with that person, Uh there's, there's no ring on your damn finger. Or at least close to it. <laughs> nah. But I can under I can understand that. I don't think personally I would ever be able to do that just because I feel like I need that connection and to know what I'm working with because sex is something that's very important to me. Yeah, but is sex is not gonna make your marriage get it's not stay gonna together. make it's not gonna make your marriage and, and I don't think it'll make you so, stay together, but it is a b- it is but, a giant key factor. But it, it is it because is because I am a person who like I am very I'm I am fun, I am you know, like uh, I enjoy getting the uh, like yeah. flirtatious so, attention so let me, from let my me man. Say, let you know? me say this. I didn't say only when they ring on your finger. I said, oh, close to or it. close to it. Okay, yeah. got it. If you know. What about, can I be like, can you take your pants off? Can I see what I'm working with? <laughs> 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 Would you do that? Would Send me a picture. Like, <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah, done. You know, like. She's I, not I, asking <laughs> me, by the way. We're not doing this like <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> listen, look, look, logically, like, obviously, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you have to connect but with the partner. Yeah, I get it. But at the yeah. same time, if you do that where you sleep with the whoever you're dating a month in, then what's your odometer by the time you're 45 or 35 or 30? Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> do you, you want me to answer that question? No. I was like. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't, I wasn't asking. I mean, the, the, I mean, you know, who wants a car with high mileage? But all I'm saying is mm-hmm. you've got to be selective. Yeah. Because you could sleep with somebody that represents a terrible father figure for the son or daughter that yeah. you're going to bring up that now you have to care for and you have to deal with his ass for the rest of your life. Yes. I know this chick. Um, she, she used to be my housekeeper. Uh, she used to be a friend of and my ex, whatever sex was fucking a huge thing for her in a relationship. Sounded a little like you. She goes to sleep with this guy, right? And dates this guy. She sleeps with him. He has two different kids with two different mothers, whatever. He ends up getting her pregnant. Okay, but wait, there, those are uh, giant red flags. I know, I know, but what <laughs> the <laughs> dumbass went for it anyways. No, okay. sex, hold on. <laughs> hold on. She said sex was so fucking good. She stayed. Now she's the third mother of his third child. She's not with him. I think he's in jail or something. It's just so stupid because now yeah. she has to deal with him for the rest of her life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, if you're going to sleep with somebody, just think i'm just saying think twice i'm not here to change the culture for you yeah of course. in my culture we don't do that i'm just saying just think is that somebody if you made a mistake and got pregnant with them is that yeah, somebody even if you're not with him 
is that Absolutely. somebody you want to keep in your life and and have as a father of your child mm -hmm. that is so important i yeah. mean and also another thing about sex i do believe on and i'm 100 percent on it sex is a big part of a marriage and i get it yeah but then it could be the only good thing about a marriage. Would you stay in a marriage that only sex is good? No. Okay, just, I would need that. It's a no, right? Yeah. You need the whole thing together, right? Yeah. Now, what about if somebody had it all together, not stagnant, very successful, goes for life, the whole thing, uh, cup size is good, sex is not the greatest. Hold on. I don't think he's got a tiny dick. Here's what I'm saying, <laughs> right? Got, got something you can work with, right? right? But right. it's just sex is not great, but everything else checks the fucking list you will make that marriage work because i believe you can make sex great well yeah because i would be like let's go find a sex coach or something like that well that's sex coach up, yeah, you gotta like learn wanna... that shit on you you can figure it out youtube you were gonna say youtube <laughs> you can't learn that on youtube you gonna go to some <laughs> porno page listen here's what i'm saying here's what if you are in a marriage where let's say you know he was in the most fun in bed, but he checks your fucking no, list. Get, get then it. you'll figure it yeah. out. I mean, I think, I think, especially now, the things that are most can I say one thing? Can I say yeah. one thing? Yeah, you can teach. Because I would think of this of a girl, right? Like I can teach a girl uh, how I like sex, and then sex is great. But I can't teach her exactly how to be ambitious. Because if oh, she's only ambitious, no. let me yeah. finish. Because if she's only ambitious because of me then she doesn't want it for herself and it's not gonna last. I can make you a fucking, a sex model. I can make you a pro at it, but I can make you want something else in life the way I want you to want it on your own, for your own, in order for us to make a marriage work. All I'm saying is this whole city is fucking, dating scene is about how good is sex. And I, I think it's what's driving the city down. And I'll end with this. I, I I forgot who's the president that said this. Like, the farther as a society, us as a society, step away in ruling this country from the way God us wants to, God's way, the further down we're we're getting, and we're so fucking far from it. Yeah. And think of it as a marriage. If God, whether you're Christian, you're G you're Jewish, you're Muslim. Every marriage tells you, wait till you're married. I mean, sorry, every religion tells you, wait till you're married. And I'm here saying, do that. Oh my God, that's crazy. In Miami, impossible. I gotta see what I'm working with before I sleep with that guy. <laughs> but then I don't know if you believe in God or I don't know if you're religious at all, yeah. but I feel like we're so far from our religious beliefs and like you'd go to church on Sunday, but then you're sleeping with a guy you know you don't wanna be with anyways. And because you have needs, yeah. but your fucking life is falling apart. Where there's other needs you need to fucking handle. 100%. I want to hear what you're going to say about what I just said. No, I, I, so I am not that type of person yeah. who has needs like in that sense. Because yeah. I actually, for like a while, I was like, man, I haven't had sex in a really long time. Like this past couple of months that I've just been dating and I'm just thinking to myself like, wow, it's been a while. But I thoroughly believe and I'm very choosy yeah. now that I have a fucking child, like especially, I mean, even before then, I wasn't big on that. I, I mean, I had a, a high school boyfriend and then that was like, you know, the, the person that I was like, I'm going to be with forever for like four years. And then, you know, like I was like a, a boyfriend person. I just mm -hmm. was. So mm -hmm. I wasn't big in dating. But I see where you're coming from and I get it and I respect it and I understand it. You know, I think I benefit a little bit as a single mom because his dad is at least a good dad with him directly. And that was something that we agreed on and yeah. we, we understood because we had a phone call to each other that that had happened. He was in LA because he travels a lot for work and it was a phone call and I was crying and I was scared and he was super excited. And at the end of the day, when we had to become adults and sit down and talk about this very very big deal because i was on birth control like it, it, the way that it happened i had even had a ct scan i was in an accident i had a ct scan wow. done at a hospital here and nobody caught anything and i'm three months pregnant like that's very scary and then you wow. look on a screen and you see a whole baby and there are people who yeah. are like oh abortion and stuff like that like when you see a fucking whole ass baby and you hear a heartbeat your brain like it's, it's different. rewired. You're a mother, yeah. It's, it's rewired. It's different, yeah. So I sat, we sat down and he was like, look, at the end of the day, I'm always going to be an amazing dad. We never were sure what would happen with our relationship. I think both of us had really good hopes for it. But at the end of the day, I knew he, you know, most likely would never be a piece of shit dad. 
you know that's good from the little time that i knew him we both came from broken homes and we just wanted to find a way to make it work even if we weren't together and you know we definitely have a situation that we could be more amicable but i think it's just neutral i don't think either of us want to like go out and make each other's lives miserable and i see other people and that's like the person's full intention so i would say you know there are women who make careless decisions because i wouldn't say they're poor decisions but they're careless decisions where they're like okay i'm gonna be a you know fourth baby mama or i'm gonna be a third baby mama like those are red flags that i would pay attention to man you remind me of one this one woman really (laughs) she is so (laughs) beautiful let me tell you no let me tell you let me tell you why i'm scared because no 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 no. (laughs) let me tell you why this woman is so successful like very successful she's also 28 She's a blonde, looks like you. Gorgeous. Everything is perfect in her life. And she goes to get pregnant by this guy that has like many kids by different mothers. He's also in jail. And and then I'm like, everything about you is perfect. And I talk to her as a friend. But what the fuck is that? Like, like she owns multiple businesses. Businesses only men become successful at. And she's killing it. You know, dresses extremely well, travels, the whole thing. I'm like, you know what I do believe? Because when we go back to God, it's so crazy. I do believe in God. I fully believe in God. But God says don't have sex till you're married. God says don't have sex till you're married. God also says, like, don't get tattoos. God also says, like, there's a lot. I of don't things. have them. I don't have them. I don't have tattoos. Got I'm it. telling you. There's the only one violation of God's I, message. I am very, <laughs> I am very, very old school. Yes, the sex one I have not, st- I have not stood by. So I'll face that one day. I- I'll tell you this. Tell me. Like I'm not saying change your life today. Yeah. But I promise you, when you pull the idea of how good is sex out of it for the first, let's say, six months, to me, I would say till marriage. However, let's say six months to a year, you will get to know that person different. Yeah. I promise you. Mm-hmm. Like, like the last woman I got to know and. Because, hey, I'm, this is not a thing we do. Like, I, you get to know so much more. And there's this, still this thing, like, I want it. I want it. Because as a man, I want to fucking work for it. And I want to yeah, keep yeah, impressing yeah, yeah. you. And I want to do this. Yeah. And something about not waiting to have sex well, I makes can anything see, better. I can, see, I can see what you mean by that. And I would also say there are friendships. I started seeing someone more recently. and Are you still seeing him? Yeah. Why are you on this date, then? <laughs> I've been caught. <laughs> he w- he'll understand. Sure, that's a red flag. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, we were friends for over a year before. Yeah, yeah. Friends with the family and close. To me. So it's like I I think because you get to know a person on a friendship level, those relationships are the ones that always work out the best. Like oh, we were friends or we have been around or we, yeah, like I knew her and and stuff like that. Because when you know someone to their core as a person, as a human, as a friend, not trying to impress them, not trying to go on dates, you know the yeah. real raw version of them. And then when they're trying to pursue you, that's completely different. So I loved getting to know like the two different sides of, of him. And I, I admire it in other people's relationships when, they're, when they tell me like, oh, we were friends before and stuff like that. Because like you said, sex is not involved. So you know a completely different side of a human and you just know them right sex is sex clouds you i say that all the time especially if it's like gr- great sex which like you know i had a i had a boyfriend and i wouldn't say we had like the greatest sex ever but i would just say there was like a nice connection there and yeah i was an idiot like there were so many times where i just look back i also was young but i look back and I i'm like it. my god why are you so stupid yeah. you know but so how do you go about dating um, so would you say you're single now or not no i don't Okay, so <laughs> if you were single, how do you go about dating? How do you um, pick? Well, when I was single. When you were single, like if there's a woman wants to know, how would she filter out if that's a man she should go out with or not? You can't just say go out with somebody who, who's been a friend. No, but you know what? I really wasn't doing a lot of active dating yeah. because my schedule didn't allow for that, yeah. and I wasn't really interested in that. Yeah. So the the way that we happened was because we were friends. Yeah. And and any other man that I would go out and I see, I had been on a few dates. I think that there are things that check off on my list, and I would say masculinity, uh, manners, right? How a person is with not just me and walking on the side of a sidewalk if you let me walk on the outside i could never go on a date with you again i 
think that that's part of manners and masculinity. I want to feel safe and protected with you. Um, I spoke about this for a little bit on one of my last podcasts that I always, for so much of my life, associated financial stability with masculinity, but it's not because there are many men in Miami that have tons of money that'll fly you anywhere, that'll buy you anything, that'll send you money, and they're so fucking feminine. They're so feminine. And they don't take control over situations or um, they're just not that shoulder to lean on. Mm -hmm. And as a woman who's also a businesswoman yeah. and constantly growing, and I'm not a woman that's going to go on a date with you for a purse. And I'm not a woman who's going to go because I know you can buy me a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, uh, the benefit of growing up in Miami is you're very easily unimpressed with things. Yeah. And most men have already tried doing that with you when you were yeah. 18. So you learned. So now when I go out with a man. Yeah. They're like within 10 minutes of a date, I can be like, I don't like this person. And it's usually so. So of that. if you go out with a man and, and, um, like you wouldn't go out with a man who doesn't have money because no. it means he's not man enough. So and I, I agree say, with you. I wouldn't say that I wouldn't go with a man who has no money. No, that's not true. I wouldn't go with a man that has no money. I think you need to be doing like, at I, don't, least I, don't six, believe you. I think, no, I think you need to be six figures and up, right? Suspicious. Like we can make a hundred thousand dollars, right? That's not a, that's, that's like a, you would go out with a guy that makes a hundred thousand dollars. No, a hundred thousand dollars in what industry? Cause I can't go out with someone who has a nine to five. Well, it, it doesn't fucking matter. It's a hundred thousand dollars. So d d you can't take you to Komodo with that. <laughs> I don't want to go to Komodo. <laughs> uh, you know, you get what I'm but, saying. But I'm right, saying let me just say this. Let me just say uh -huh. this. A hundred thousand dollars in Miami ain't shit. That's why. Yes, exactly. Okay. So that's why I'm saying minimum. You need to be making a hundred thousand dollars because I think a hundred thousand dollars is very attainable. And the type of man that I would date is one that would find a way to make that. And if I'm dating you, usually I date people who are older than me. I date I date men that are like ten years older. So is, is that your current no, boyfriend? No, he's actually two years older, but he mm -hmm. has the masculinity. Okay. He is a hard, a super hard fucking worker. Good. He's a go getter. He has ambition. He has drive. And actually, it was funny because when I met him as a friend, I always told him, "You have insane potential that is like completely unused." What does he do? He's a public adjuster. Awesome. Yeah. So Lots of money in that. Works industry. a lot with you guys. Um, Do I know him? I don't think so. Okay. No. Okay. We'll say his name off air. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> but he's a see how person. it works. But he, you know, he he owned businesses before in the past too. Like he's done a lot of things. I I like I I admire the fact that he's kind of a person who just enjoys trial and error and process and yeah. And he learns from mistakes or he enjoys just growth in general. Yeah. So I felt that he had a very mature um vibe to him when Got it came it. to that. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, that's again something you can't teach someone. I agree. I but agree. I know that where he's at now can be at the level that I know I will be at one day. So d so again, I don't know who you're with, but did you guys have a money conversation? Yeah, we have. Okay. Good. Yeah. We've How had we've had conversations about um finances um, we've actually had conversations about how would we be able to like monetize the things that are currently in our life. Moving you think forward you and think like that. And now I'm speaking in general because mm -hmm. I'm thinking of someone's story. D what do you think of a marriage that where the woman makes more money? That means she spends more in the house. Um, but I would never split bill split bills in a marriage. Let me just finish, let me finish. God damn it! I already I'm said not. no. Shit. No. Okay. <laughs> Let's say he makes more than a hundred, mm -hmm. but she makes more than him for sure, almost actually triple maybe. And uh, let me say this: great, great husband, great at home. Just money's not good. Everything else is perfect. What would you do? I think that comes down to the woman. Yeah, that's true. I think that comes down to the woman because if I'm making, I struggle with that. So if I'm making all the money in the world, okay, right. And I feel like I'm very confident and comfortable and yeah. happy where I am, right? Okay. And then if I have a husband who I feel like is always confident and comfortable and happy, yeah. and that imbalance doesn't yeah. affect him, yeah. like confidence-wise and stuff like yeah. that, then I know I'm always coming home to yeah. like a husband who's just like proud and is like my my woman is amazing. Yeah. I don't I really don't know how I would feel in that situation. I don't know if I feel like um, step up like if I can do it can't you do it too yeah or if I would be like you know I just happened to be the breadwinner okay here's what I believe I believe 
a marriage like that will never last. Because the woman That's is what in I an alpha position. Get, yeah, because the woman at some point, not, a, not, a, not at some point, every woman wants to feel what you just mentioned. I want to feel protected. Yeah. Money has to do with it. Like, yeah. for example, one of my things that when I go about dating or like when I get married, there's no way I'm going to marry a woman probably makes more money than me. Somebody's going to say, dude, that's insecurity, whatever. First of all, not many women makes, make the type of money that I do. That's just facts. And I, if there is a woman, I mean, I, I could think of Kylie Jenner, for example. Like, yeah, she makes a fuck ton of money. What about would I date her? Or, or like Kim K or whatever, right? To me, like, that's real. It happens. But if I don't have more money than her, most likely I'm not going to be with her anyways because, uh -huh. because uh -huh. I do believe finances will put a man in a further alpha place. Money alone wouldn't do it. But a woman must feel at the end of every fucking day, if my shit goes to fucking, you know, if, if it goes south, this I'm man protected. got me. I'm yeah, fucking protected. I'm protected. Yeah, like I feel like a woman makes made more money than the man and they were in a marriage. At some point, he will he'll love her more than she loves him. And I feel like that not I feel like I know for a fact that marriage is never gonna fucking work. Because so love will be, not be so well, love will not be equal. So what would you but you think love should be equal? Because there's a lot of people who think one person always loves the other person more. So I I I'll never be equal and in turn and that's where I ended it. Do I believe it should be equal? No. But I should believe I do believe it should be in the man's favor. What would your advice be if like that was the relationship that I was in like would you say stay, it, it, stick it out and see hold have on, a conversation hold, that you but, know like is he gonna have more growth or like what's your advice do i divorce so but what's the exact position that you he loved you more than him and you made more money more um, than he like he loved you more than you loved him and he made more no, money i would say like it's what's a good it's a good happy marriage right? okay but i let's say i ended up uh selling one of my businesses and i have 300 million that I just sold for. So I make incredible money now and becoming like widely famous X, Y, Z. My husband is doing his thing. You don't have to divorce him. He'll easily fade away. You think that that's it? I, he's going to fade away uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like imagine you go sell your business for $300 million, but your boyfriend makes fucking a million dollar a year. So every time he goes, you can't fly commercial anymore. Every time you fly a private, uh, hey, get the jet ready for me. You know, he's going to turn into a water boy. And at some so point. Then what's your then suggestion? You don't think that he could catch up? What if he could catch up? But by the time he catches up, she's already 80. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> no, look, because like, my thing is, my thing I'm is. so stressed right now. Listen, I'm, like, I'm never going to be married. No, if I fucking, if we're flying private, it's my fucking jet. If we're in a Rolls Royce, it's my fucking car. Yeah. If we're going to dinner, it's it's because I, I'm taking you out. You're not fucking taking me out. Yeah, we're not splitting bills. I mean, look, just date within, like, date on your level, right? Like, if I go see a Kylie Jenner, she's a fucking $4 billion. I make a few million dollars a year, and I'm like, shit, I can't keep up with her. Mm -hmm. Every time she wants to fly, she wants to fly on her G700 each time. And <laughs> that's probably 50, 60 grand. That's a day. Like, what if she's like, baby, don't worry about it. I got it. And she just, like, is super in love with you. It ain't gonna happen. Really? I I'll tell you this. We're gonna have sex though. <laughs> we're gonna fight. <violate. laughs> Whoa, the double standard just <laughs> for Kylie Jenner. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We're gonna violate my rules and religion. <laughs> we just went from God and religion. It's a joke. Relax. Kylie no, no, no. But here, here's here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Like you just it's just so hard to be in a long term thing yeah. when she's got more money. Because Think of it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, there's so many things could happen. Let's say you make a million dollar a year. She just sold her business for 300 fucking million dollars. Then you guys go on a double date and that double date, that man makes the $300 million a year and she is playing her feminine self. So technically she is who he is in that marriage. Technically you are who the wife is in that marriage. Oof. That double date is fucked. Uh, Listen to so me. That's one thing. Then then you get to find out as a man with all your fucking ego that one of the people that she's working with or partnering up on a business get with because on a $300 million level, you do things with other people. But that man is a billionaire. 
then boom, you know that man can do things you can't. And at some point, she wants to feel protected. I don't give a fuck how loyal she well, is. No, it's true. Hold and on, then, and hold then on. The man Let me finish. Very self-conscious. Uh, yeah, I don't give a fuck <laughs> how confident you are in her, and she may never cheat on you, but she'll think of what if she didn't cheat on you? She's a great woman, but what if? And at some point, that will fade out, for sure. I know a friend that every time she goes on a date, four or five people, four or five couple in that date. Her husband could be the old, the only one that doesn't make that much money, mm -hmm. and it's it's weird when you're in a crowd of people, a crowd of like couples, and everybody knows that she is the breadwinner. Like again, it goes back to the type of woman and man, but I don't believe it, it lasts so long. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just because a man got to be a man. Like the way I define a marriage, a man in a marriage, you got to be a lover, provider, protector. If you can't do those, then and I said it in a podcast like years ago, and I got some lash for it. The same words that I'm saying now, like, like uh, we are becoming more of an economical planet. Life is becoming more fucking expensive, in general, because life is becoming more expensive. Life is becoming very hard right now, and things are about to get fucked with the economy in the next, like, I'll say, a couple of years. Things gonna change. Now, women have like there is less women now gonna make money. There's less everybody gonna make money. Now there's even lesser women gonna make money. Now the women is, now women make less money, but now life is become, becoming more economical, but they like now more expensive things. Mm -hmm. Now the gap of, oh, I'm a, I'm a female, but I'm gonna make it to the point I can buy all these things I like. Now that idea is almost fading away unless you marry into it, right? Not for all women, and I understand. And now on the man level, now there's gonna be less men make money. Now the men men been making money, they're gonna make more money. Now these men have too many fucking options, so these women gotta fucking step it up to be number one for choice of that man. However, all I'm saying is, I and mean, shit, if I was a woman myself, probably <laughs> figuring out how to get with somebody or in for a real marriage with, with that is more successful than me. You know what it is, is um, I have been in those relationships where the men have or, uh, absurd amounts of money and it's not everything. Can I reiterate like money is not everything about yeah. a marriage, but it's, we're just discussing we're that discussing one that topic. topic. Yeah. yeah, we're discussing it as a topic. The same way that sex alone doesn't save a marriage. Of course. Neither does money because at the end of the day, there are men that can go out and make all this money and then leave a woman at home feeling neglected or like the number one thing that I I would fucking hate is being a woman who takes care of the kids and stays home. I'll fucking off myself. I can't do that. I need the connection with others. I need to make money. I need to do sales. That's all I've done my entire life is sales. Car sales for me was huge. Car sales hmm. was I always described it as I've never done I've never done coke ever. But I've always said I did a deal and it felt like you just did a line of coke or you took like 12 espresso shots and <laughs> you're just on an on a high in life right yeah then you see how much money you made yeah and it's like you want to sell seven more five more you come in on your weekend you come in on your sunday you come in on y then you live and breathe and i had to get out of that world because mm -hmm. it was unhealthy for me because i found this addiction to that but in that addiction i realized how much of all the other places of my life i neglected and that happens in a lot of relationships right mm-hmm so there are men who go out and do that. And the woman's just home and neglected. And the woman's fucking taking care of the kids. And then when the husband comes home, he's fucking tired from making all this money, right? And then he doesn't want to deal with the babies crying. But nobody took into consideration the mom's been taking care of the kids crying for like a fucking year nonstop. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so hard. It's so hard being a yeah. female. And especially in it the is. economy. We just talked about the economy right now. Most couples, most husband and wives, both need to work like the wife has to do something even if it's having a little call center job to make some sort of income because the husbands are not able to make enough to afford fucking food a roof i gas. honestly think he's not man enough then no because some people are well i can explain are, some people are capped with a salary we live in america we live in miami this city has the most opportunity we live in we live in florida Florida has the most opportunity in general. Mm -hmm. America has the most opportunity in general as well out of every other country. Sorry. 
and I believe a man. No, I, I feel like I'm too big this for mask, the chair. Right? I've been, oh, I've been working so out a lot, oh. right? My biceps are squeezed in this chair. <laughs> so, so listen. <laughs> so, I believe we're given an opportunity for all of us to make a lot of money, right? Yeah. Just for being in America, because I seen outside of America, I lived there. To me, I believe if I couldn't afford a marriage where my wife doesn't have to work, if like if my wife personally, if my wife wants to work, I'm not gonna say no to you. But I'm gonna fund the business for you. And you're going to go make that fucking business work because you're off clock when I say so if I need you, right? Uh, if we need to take a trip, I'm not going to fucking wait till you take time off and we do a trip. Yeah. If I've planned this l five stars fucking seven stars trip, I'm going to Dubai soon and doing this whole thing. Oh, let me ask for time. No, I'm the only fucking boss in mm -hmm. your life. I'll fund your business, do a little business so you feel complete. But you ain't gonna get a job. But that's so a, but that's a very different mindset that you that you have. I understand. Let okay. Me, let me finalize. Yeah. So that's what I believe. I been I have been ready to be married since probably I was twenty five. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be married since I was twenty five. I really did. But I knew my finances didn't allow, so I shut the fuck up. Though I made more than a hundred a year. Because the life that I wanted for me and my wife, I couldn't afford. I broke my first million dollar a year. And I said, am I ready not to meet someone? I said, no, nah, no, you're not. Because you think million is a lot till you fucking make one. Then you're like, fuck, I'm broke. Mm -hmm. Then I started getting serious about, okay, maybe I want to meet with someone to get married. This year, I just turned 30, 2022, that's when I decided I'll get serious about it. Because I think financial, I'm stable enough. I'm just, I'm nowhere where I need to be, but I'm doing very well to, for me to say, sure, I'll get serious. I had to wait to put myself in this place to get married because my wife is not going to go fucking slave for another man. I'm the only boss in my wife's life, period. Mm -hmm. Like my, the one last woman I got to know, she had a very higher up job with Chanel for 11 years, like, like regional manager for Chanel in all of Dubai, mm -hmm. like crazy. And one of the things, like, she's just too addicted to that. She's done that for too long, and she's now 33, and it, it's just hard for her to not do that anymore, to be in a marriage where, you know, it was just tough. So that was one of the things we had to talk about. I was like, well, then keep with Chanel, because she was promised the next higher up thing. I'm like, then keep going, but that's not going to work for me. Right. I'm not going to do that. Right. Your whole job doesn't even pay enough for you to fucking say it comes at the cost of where Jalal is going. So I had to call that off. And in general, like, I feel like if a woman works too much, and I, I said this before on a video, like, like there is the side of like, oh, I'm a, uh, I don't want to be the woman that stays home all day. I want to go out. I want to do something, which is fair. But I feel like women that felt that way too long ago wanted to do the opposite so bad that they overdone it. Now they feel like, fuck, that's all I do. That's who I am. And no man can keep up with me. Now I'm too masculine for men and the whole thing. And I say, you wanted to be a boss babe so bad that you forgot how to be a babe. You yeah. could be a boss babe, yeah. but you forgot how to be a babe. I like, term, and I, boss babe, I, I hate fucking, I think it's the worst I, fucking term in the entire I fucking, fucking hate it. I, think it's so fucking I know. Scary. Listen to this. Then I meet these women. Now we're talking about the women that make money, mm -hmm. and you don't feel feminine in them. Yeah. You, I don't feel like, yeah, I fucking. Well, make you know, one of the, the, be the, highest TikToking hashtag and all this stuff right now is hashtag divine femme. I think that it's so that. there's a there's a a lot of women right now, right? That we have suffered in relationships and I see it because I deal with it with my with my friends and I see it every fucking day. And in across the US, this is the norm where like I was saying, a man goes and he works and the wife is at home fucking losing her mind. Do you know that like men do aren't even properly educated on like what a woman's body goes through during pregnancy and like postpartum, how real it is and how scary it is. And women don't have the fucking support that they need. Their husbands go back to work and we're stuck with a baby. Not all men. Most, uh, most men, most men. And then I think there's also a lot of men who have this entitlement that like I am providing. So that means I don't need to be there emotionally. And I also don't need to be there. No as a father, mm -hmm. a lot of men, a lot okay. of men. So when they get home, the yeah. wife is fucking losing her mind. She doesn't have money that was given to her to go do her nails. She didn't have time to go do her fucking hair. She's exhausted. She cleans the house, she cooks, and she somehow manages to take care of all the kids. When the kids get sick, it's her obligation to do, to do the duty yeah, of taking care of the mom. she put herself there. Okay, but, but, mm -hmm. there are not a lot of resources for women to understand 
that they have choices or how to get out of that or just maybe you made a bad decision in a partner and now you're stuck in a marriage and you don't know a way out you said that a lot of women don't have the resources to know i would say that there's a lot of women that don't have proper resources to know that they because have they options. don't want to have it because you can go on your smartphone and have resources okay and so educate yourself she can go on youtube and watch you and learn you okay but she didn't seek it so you basically are saying like that they can get their own advice on YouTube and then w they would just leave their husband and fend for themselves in the streets? Well, I'm not saying like go leave your husband right now, but you need to know what is like, what's the life you want to live? Because if, if, it, if it meant leave your husband for you to have the life you want and you tried with him so many times for years and it's not working, okay. what is the opposite? If you don't so do that, what's question, the opposite? So, so I have a real question for you. So the opposite of that is what? Die with for that? marriage that's there's a lot of people who fucking do that so that's my question that's to you that's their choices let's say let's say i have i have zero dollars in my bank account right mm -hmm. i need you also to, to to remember too like when you say like that's their choices there's a lot of people who don't have the mindset that you have okay so when I, there are some people who's like actual emotional ability and intelligence level don't allow them to think as far as you think right we talk about growth that there are people who outgrow other people yeah. because some people literally don't have that fucking capacity I got it. okay so w when you are a woman and i'm asking you this because this was a, a caption that was sent to me or not a caption a comment that was put on my tiktok and i genuinely had no idea i'm like i don't know how the fuck to reply back to this i know what i would do if i was in that situation but i'm not going to publicly post that Tell me. i've got zero dollars in my bank account mm -hmm. i have three kids mm -hmm. my husband's a fucking piece of shit He's got a lot of money. I know that he would take me to court. I can't afford attorney fees. I don't know what I'm going to do to pay an attorney if I want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. He has all the money in the world. I don't have a job. I wouldn't be able to have a roof over my head. I don't have any living family. But what I want more than anything is to have my kids and just be alone. What, as a, as a woman, and you said it, mm -hmm. there's a lot of women who don't make as much money as you make. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of women who don't get to, to the top, right? So as a woman who's stuck at home with this, I'm going to watch YouTube's how to be sure. bracelet to make a video. No, I would love to know what okay. is your mindset. First of all, if that man truly has a lot of money, she can easily consult with divorce attorneys mm -hmm. in order for them to advise her on how's that divorce going to go on what to expect. And there's these attorneys, once they know that person, the man has a lot of money, they work pro bono. They'll, yeah, they'll wait to get paid till that case is done. Mm -hmm. That's one. Okay. Once they see a higher chance of making that case work, which is easy, because you're the mother, he's the father, it's such an easy case, they will take that case. That's one. Mm -hmm. Before you take that step, you need to have a plan or at least an idea, I'm going to go get that job. There is some sort of s source of a job. Mm -hmm. Because the money for the kids, it'll be granted. That's guaranteed. If he has money, you'll have money for kids, and you'll have a allow an allowance in order for you to start your life. Then, based on what's the allowance, based on all of that, you'll know what job to get or wait for the job that you need to have to basically take care of your kids and have that job while you have all this money coming in for the kids. So that's that. Step one, once you do that, that woman's life is going to start to change. More doors are going to open. And the job that she's going to get is not just about the money. It's also about her meeting different people that will expand her mind. Then mm -hmm. she's going to start wanting more. And if she truly wants more for herself than that piece of shit mirror she's in, she'll find that way after she does step one that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would tell that woman. Now, I'm assuming that marriage, she's been in it for years, trying with that man, as doing absolute best for years to make it work. And that man is truly like that last straw didn't work and, and he didn't doesn't want to take mm -hmm. care of her and the kids. Then, yeah, I would go through that. I highly advise. You to so go you're that. so you stand firm with like because what you said is an actual valid out. So you stand is firm. Is or isn't? Is. Uh huh. So you would still stand firm, and I would agree with you to I mean, what is the a lot of extent. What is the op opposite? Die in the house? I mean, because no, here's the thing. not in our no, no, world, no, no, but no. in a lot of other people's worlds, yes. We're talking about people in America, right? Yes. Okay, you have that option. If you're not in yeah. America, that's a whole different podcast, right? right? Yeah. Uh, if you're in America, you have that option, 100%. Now, the opposite of not doing what I just said do is die in that marriage, and a lot of these women would stay in that marriage till the kids are 18, then she wants to find herself again, but now you're 50. Yeah. 
And then now so much of your life has passed and now you want to start at 45. You want to start at 50. That is fucking difficult. Mm -hmm. And then there's this thing that I could argument, I could give you, I wouldn't even know what to think of, which is it's all like she's going to have to sacrifice something with the kids. And for that her. would take insane amount of courage. And yeah, because I've, I've never been a parent, so yeah. I can't say just get rid of your kids. It, it's unfair to say. Yeah, you can. But it, there is a level of selfishness needs to kick in for you to live. Mm -hmm. For you to have this life. I was see not seeing this woman. I met this friend. She wants, like, let me just give him the best life possible. One child, let me give him the best life possible. I'll worry about my life later. I'm like, you're already 34. Like, you're going to be fucking 45. Maybe when he's 18 or 16. D do you know what are your chances in dating? Yeah. Like, you're going to have to date a guy who's definitely older than you. Not with a lot of money, because if he's 50 and has a lot of money, he's definitely not going for you. <laughs> he's going to go for that 28 years old or that 30 years old. Wonderful. Fucking facts. And he, he and he's not going to go for you. So you'd find a girl who's 45, didn't much do in her life other than she still looks decent, good, whatever, at 45. And she wants this guy with at this age with all this money, with all this, done so much, and all you've done in your life is a marriage for the last 40 years, and you just got out of it, and you think you're going to have that guy? The guy's not going for you. That's fucking fact. Mm -hmm. Like, I sometimes, and fuck, I'm going to get canceled for this, like, like when I see the type of, uh, some women would approach me, and I think, did you really, and I don't say it, do you really think you have a chance with me? I'm 30, I'm very successful, Compared to what I was, I'm not a billionaire yet. I will be. You see my name. You, you can Google me. You'll know who I am. There's articles about who the fuck I am. And you think you're going to have me, your single mother, two kids, good looking, didn't do much, just got your real estate license. You think that's going to impress me? Mm -hmm. Like, Timmy, I'm like, I'm, am I not loud enough about who I am and what am I going for? Because I need to attract that woman that I know can keep up with this and can provide what I need her to provide in order for me to become the next Jalal possible. Right. Uh, like, y you know, like you got to know what you're going for. Mm -hmm. If you got two kids, you need to know what are your chances. If you're going into a marriage with two, one, two, three, four kids, what are your chances? And how is your life like? I honestly feel like if a woman has kids and your professional life is dead, you have nothing else going on, your chance to get that Brad Pitt that you want, like, it, it's not that high. Well, there's a lot of single moms that are ballers now. So, so if, if that's... Because, listen, if, if they were strong enough to do exactly what you said to do, which was to leave a marriage and get out of it, they were just as strong as you who were, like, trying to find a place when you were homeless and trying to get out of a situation that was equivalent to what you went through, right? Mm -hmm. Because technically they are homeless, but yeah. ten times worse because they have, they have other child. mouths to feed. Yeah, so that's a, huge, that's a huge leap. Yeah. That's a lot of strength and courage yes. and an incredible alpha yes. mindset that you have to lock into because not only are you, right, like your one job to this day has been to make money and that's it. Money is an amazing tool, yeah. right? But when it to care for my family, so I do have to care for your, of yeah. course, absolutely. So, and I'm not taking away that responsibility from you by any means. But when it comes to a baby, right, it's very different, it is completely different. I get it. You're there, you have to be there emotionally when you have nothing left to give, even when you have had a day where you've been selfish and you're like, I'm gonna focus on business and I'm not gonna be around, um, you know, like emotionally for my child for these hours, they're gonna be in school and I'm gonna focus on this, right. You take those moments, but then when you come home and you've given the day your fucking all, now you have to be a parent. And uh, and people forget yeah. how hard that can be. Listen. So as a single mom that was able to do something like that, very proud of you. I 100%, yeah, proud of me, sure, but I 100% think that those women have incredible value when it comes to they being do. with somebody like you yeah because they have a sense of nurture and love and emotion that they've learned from raising a child you're right that could actually boost you so much more financially because they I look agree. at things from a different aspect that's why women are women and men are men and those two beautiful roles yes work in harmony they're yin mm -hmm. and yang right mm -hmm. because your masculinity and your drive and everything you're saying right now is like do you have a, an opportunity with me my feminine side is yes i do and i have an opportunity to bring out love and compassion and softness and that that softness with your strength is what makes an incredible union. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and 
the kid comes a huge play into it and stuff like that. But I know people that will fucking figure it out because they know that they can become the next Jalal and level up times 10 yeah. with the woman that's next to them. Let me flip it. You're shopping at Whole Foods. I work at Whole Foods. I make $50,000 a year. I'm wearing my plastic bag and you're shopping. And I ask you out. Mm -hmm. Do I have an opportunity? No. Exactly. That's all what the fuck I was saying. Mm -hmm. So I imagine but, on top of that. But. Imagine on top of but, that. But. Okay. Here, here's my defense to that. You met a woman and mm -hmm. her plastic cap and her career that you just gave me the example of mm -hmm. was what you associated with her kids. Right or wrong? Hold on. Say that again. So you told me I'm working at. Where? No, no, no. Whatever. I'm working. You're shopping. Okay. So okay. wherever so if you're you working. Flip it, do it right. Wherever you're working. Let's just say like you're a janitor. Okay. Okay. So I'm saying that you are you when you are telling me about this girl that you shut down like right then and there. Did you you shut her down because I didn't do it disrespectful by the way. I don't. Want women That's fine. Yeah. But you shut her down and you visualized her like lesser because she had the two kids. Two kids and had nothing else going on in her life. Okay. So like. At all. I don't even know if the kids, like when you say it, I understand how you say it, but what I dissect it, I don't think the kids take the play. It's more that she personally brings nothing to the table and it would be equivalent if she, that so now she has double responsibility, which I agree with. If she didn't have, if I met a woman, didn't have kids made $50,000 a year or whatever, I'll still, I'll entertain her. You would entertain her. I would. Okay. I'm, I don't value a woman based on her money. I assume all women don't make a lot of money. Not all. Most women don't make a lot of money. Okay. There's very few, uh, you know, a few out there. Mm -hmm. There's not every woman makes your money or the bad bitches friends that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't decide if I'm going to go out with a woman because she's making so much money or not. I don't care how much money you make. I actually feel like if she's not making that much money, I actually feel more of her feminine energy. Mm -hmm. I honestly do. Because you want, but well, because you take the pride in being the actual provider. Well, not just that, because she hasn't gotten in that world of business and deal with these sharks out there and mm -hmm. have to harden up in order for her to last in that world. And then now she's going to bring that into this marriage and she's always stressed about money or things are going on with the, whatever she's dealing with and do she's, you, do she's you think green. you could be with someone who's equal equal to you? In what term? Do you think that Cuz we can't be You make 2 million dollars, I make 2 million dollars. Could you be with somebody who's equal? Mm, depends on the woman. Let's say if we make the same money. If if it, if I make 200, you make 200? No. But if I make make 2 million and you make 2 million? What about if I make 2 million but I have a kid? It depends on how you manage your life with that kid. Mm -hmm. Is that kid full time? Yes. Uh, is he is full time? Mm -hmm. Well, our house better be fucking big. <laughs> well, it depends on how are you man, how disciplined is the kid, how you raise the kid. Um, I gotta meet the kid. I gotta love the kid too, because mm -hmm. if I can't love him like my, he's my own. I, I, it's unfair for me. I'm not gonna ruin what he has, right? Yeah. So it depends on those things. So it's a yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more no than a yes. Yeah. But it's a yes, absolutely. Yeah. But it depends on her life with that child, the way he was raised, and then my connection with the child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many topics that we touched on today when it comes to like dating and everything. <laughs> it's funny because I think everybody who started watching the podcast wouldn't have expected that it would take this turn. Because there's it's common. I mean, yeah. And so yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you say that I agree with. There's a lot of stuff that you say that I I. I don't agree with because um, like what just because well it, it would take forever and we have to come to an end unfortunately but I think that it comes from a place when I feel that I want to get be, be defensive comes from a place because I am a mom and I know the struggle that it takes for moms as a woman and I think one day too when you become a parent that you might even have some some changes in, I, I believe it in thought process yeah, I believe it which is why like I can't sit here and like go back and forth with you and I fully respect and understand everything that you're saying and my well actually one of the things that you say the most is like if I can't love the kid like my own then I can't be with her and I respect that because that's all I would that's like one of the top things like my son comes first and I understand that there are men out there who don't want to date women because of that like my son will always take precedence over anyone who's in my life 
I agree. And, and the way it should be. Yeah, and and the only person that he won't ever take precedence over is myself because if I'm, uh, you know, in a fucking trash can, then I can't take care of my kid. Mm -hmm. So I I come first. But um, I do think your mindset will change a little when you when you become a parent. But um, you know, it's it's been nice to be able to talk to somebody with a different mindset. Yeah. I think the internet might be a little angry at this one, but. Again, one of the most important yeah. things in life is exactly what you said. It's speaking to other people and allowing them to open up your yeah. mind and being able to just do what we did today, which was shoot the shit, connect, understand each yeah. other, and just be like in some so sort of agreement. I'll, I'll sum up what I said. Yeah. And that's my last statement. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you're out there again with your single mother and uh, the law didn't rule fair to for you and uh, you were left, by, you know, with that child by a single man, by, by, a, by a man and, and you had to deal with it all on your own, I feel sorry. Actually, I want to apologize almost. Uh, I think it's unfair. I truly believe one way to fix this world is teach men how to be men. And then naturally women will go back to acting like women should actually do, be most feminine and the whole thing. If men learn how to be men uh, and act like we used to old school, like old culture. Well, if, culture men, if men learn to appreciate a woman for a woman, I think women a lot which we could go back and that all yeah that that could become a whole different thing so all i'm saying is i don't want to be out there and you think like you know he's the fucking he's trying to he's the next andrew tate i'm not that's not what i believe <laughs> but i what i believe is men should learn how to be men women should learn how to be women if you're a man you're out there you got kids fucking take care of them you're not with that mother take care of them still take care of that mother she's still their mother you don't want her to look bad to their, you know, to the kids that you're raising, that she's raising for you. So take care of them. And I just wish, you know, men start acting like men again and let women do what they need to do as women and it'll just figure itself out. And I didn't say <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> date a woman with a child. I said- There it, are contingencies. It, yeah, there, yes. it depends. Because if I had kids, let's say you're single, no kids, and I had kids and I'm gonna date you, you're gonna ask questions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. If it's more than one kid, I, I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> if it's one, we can talk. <laughs> That's it. Jalal, would you do a second date with me? What? Would you ever, would you take me on a second no, date? No, because I just realized you're not even single. Fuck that. Red flag. <laughs> you're done. We're done. Absolutely not. We're done. It was a pleasure having you on today. Thank pleasure you for taking time mine. out of your day to Absolutely. come and do this with Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Pleasure is mine. Again, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, anywhere at the King of Miami Real Estate. Whether it's hate or love, send it enemies. <laughs> Let's do this. There's going to be a lot of hateful DMs. <laughs> I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye. I, I enjoy this.